Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, we are going to rigorously prove the law of cosines, and in two very different ways I'm at it. The first way will involve some plain looking triangles. The second way is gonna involve a triangle formed with vectors. Let's start with that first way though. I'm gonna draw three types of triangles. First one on the left is an acute triangle. All the angles are less than 90. The middle one is a right triangle, has a right angle. And the last one is obtuse. It has an angle greater than 90. If I can show that the law of cosines holds for all three of these triangles, I'll approve it for all triangles. Let's label the sides A through C, and let's label the angle at issue theta. Theta is acute on the left, right in the middle, obtuse on the right. Now to begin proving case one, I drop a vertical line segment straight down from that top vertex. We'll call that line segment H. Doing so creates two right triangles, very nice right triangles. That left bottom leg I'll call X, which means the right bottom leg has to be B minus X because they gotta add up to B. Now when I see right triangles, I feel like Pythagorating. So let's Pythagorate the left one first. We'll call that number one. X squared plus H squared has to be A squared. And number two goes like so. That underlined guy in yellow, I'm gonna foil. And notice X squared plus H squared made an appearance in number one. That is A squared. Go ahead and sub him right on in. Doing so gives me something it really resembles the law of cosines. I just need to take care of that x somehow. How do I do that? Well, look once again at that left-right triangle. Cosine of theta adjacent over hypotenuse is x over a. Multiply both sides by a and you have solved for x, supplying you with an opportunity to substitute down below, proving case one. Now, what about case two? Well, it turns out this is the most straightforward one to prove. Don't worry about adding anything to your triangle. Leave it as it is and Pythagorate it as it is. a squared plus b squared is c squared. Now to the left side, subtract a zero. Subtracting or adding zero doesn't change a thing, but now rewrite that zero in a very clever way. Note that cosine of 90 is zero, which means that anything times cosine of 90, say 2ab, must also be zero. So zero is the same thing as that underlined guy in yellow. Throw him in and you have proven case two in one fell swoop. And finally, case three, the obtuse fella. How do we deal with him? Well, same as last time, vertical line segment straight down, but this time horizontal line segment straight to the right, call it x. Pythagorate these two right triangles, a small fella and a big fella. When I Pythagorate the small right triangle, I get x squared plus h squared is a squared. The big boy Pythagorates like so, that underlined guy there in yellow, foil him out like last time, and also like last time, x squared plus h squared is a. Make that substitution and you are left with something that very closely resembles the law of cosines, but you need to get rid of that x somehow. How do you do that? Well, notice that that bottom angle in the small right triangle is 180 minus theta. If I cosine 180 minus theta, I am left with x over a adjacent over hypotenuse. When I multiply both sides by a, I solve for x, but I don't want a cosine of 180 minus theta, I want cosine of theta or something like that. That's where I'm gonna use the identity up there at the top of the screen. Cosine of 180 minus theta is always negative cosine of theta. There are some examples illustrating the fact, but a way to rigorously intuit it is if I, if I rotate theta degrees counterclockwise and then 180 degrees counterclockwise, which would produce a theta degree reference angle in Q2, the x coordinates of those two purple points are opposite in sign. So, make that substitution. X is negative A cos theta, sub that in down below, and you have proven case three. With that, you have proven the law of cosines for any triangle. Lastly, here's a very different way to prove the law of cosines, one that uses vectors. And I'm gonna do this in 3D space to really hammer the point home. Let me have two vectors there in red in the 3D space. Call that top guy vector A, the bottom guy vector B. The angle between those two vectors is theta. And I'm gonna draw a vector connecting the arrowhead of B to the arrowhead of A. Let's call that vector C. Now to do this, recall the geometric definition of the dot product. When I dot two vectors X and Y, I just take the magnitudes of each and multiply by the cosine of the angle between them. So for example, if I apply this to the picture and dot C with itself, I get the magnitude of C times the magnitude of C times cosine of zero because there is no angle between a vector and itself. Therefore, when I dot a vector with itself, I just get the magnitude of that vector squared. In this case, the magnitude of C squared. Next, note by vector addition, whether I do tail arrowhead, tail arrowhead, or parallelogram law, C is A minus B. So C dot C is the same thing as A minus B dotted with A minus B. Now I'm gonna use dot product distributive laws here. I'm gonna assume them for now, I'll prove them in a different video, but they're just a consequence of the geometric definition up top. So saving some steps, instead of doing monomial distribution twice, I'm gonna just do binomial distribution once. A dot A is magnitude of A squared, B dot B is magnitude of B squared, and A dot B is the same thing as B dot A, the definition of the dot product of A and B. 
combining like terms gives me minus two A magnitude B magnitude cosine of theta. These two underlying quantities in green are the same thing because C is the same thing as A minus B. Here we have our law of cosines.